The ARAC, which stands for Atmospheric Release Advisory Capability, supports the Department of Energy and the Department of Defense by providing real-time assessments of the consequences that may result from an atmospheric release of radioactive material. ARAC is an integration of professional staff, numerical models, and computer systems. The ARAC contributed to the assessments of the global effects of the Chernobyl reactor accident by using a three-dimensional hemispheric scale transport and diffusion model in conjunction with wind fields from the Air Force Global Weather Central, which were obtained at 12-hour intervals. Computations were made of the evolution of the radioactive cloud over 11 days, and an estimate of the adult inhalation dose patterns due to cloud passage over Europe and the Northern Hemisphere was made. In case of a release at a nuclear site, accident information is transmitted to the assessors in the ARAC central facility for evaluation and processing. Concurrently, meteorological data are collected and topographical and geographical databases are accessed. Model input parameters will be prepared by the assessors and the ARAC computer models are run. Model output is once more screened by the assessors before distribution to the accident site and local, state, and federal agencies. This is a view of the ARAC Central Operations Room. On the right-hand side, the assessors are engaged in evaluating both incoming and outgoing data for the event in progress. While on the left-hand side, Computer operators are busy with the acquisition of data and processing of input and output files, as well as running the ARAC assessment models. In what follows, the temporal and spatial evolution of the simulated Chernobyl reactor accident cloud will be depicted in terms of the motion of the marker particles from the particle in cell ARAC assessment model. These marker particles represent the radioactive cloud and are used to compute the surface air concentrations and subsequently the adult inhalation dose patterns over Europe and the Northern Hemisphere. For orientation, this map of Europe is displayed and some key countries from which data were collected are highlighted. Sweden, which gave the first report of the Chernobyl radioactive cloud. Finland, Poland, West Germany, Italy, France, and Great Britain. The display is now a polar projection of the entire northern hemisphere, with the North Pole at the center. The legend on the right explains the color code for the heights of the particles as they simulate the release of radioactivity. The white particles will represent the elevated release of the initial explosion, while the yellow particles represent the release due to the extended fire period of the accident. Also, Greenwich date and time is displayed as the simulated cloud pattern evolves. As the particles are released, they are transported by 12 hourly wind fields for 14 levels to 10 kilometers in altitude. In addition, the particles are diffused both in the vertical and in the horizontal directions by the eddy diffusion parameters of the model. The computations indicate that the cloud became segmented during the first day with the lower section heading toward Scandinavia and the upper part heading in a southeasterly direction. During the second day, April 27th, the radioactive cloud became caught up in a low pressure system causing further deformation of the cloud with the lower part continuing to travel in a northwesterly direction toward Scandinavia, passing over the northeastern part of Poland. By April 29th, the counterclockwise rotation of the low pressure system had spun off three major arms from the radioactive cloud. One continued its expansion into Scandinavia and moving at the same time southwesterly towards Eastern and Central Europe, another moving towards the Arabian Peninsula and a third towards Siberia. These segments of the cloud continued to expand in those three directions until by May 1st, 
The surface activity had spread into Central, Western, and Southern Europe, as far as France and Italy, while activity was reported in Kuwait from the second segment. And the third segment was on its way across China towards Japan, where upper air measurements agreed well with the modeled arrival time on the 2nd of May. By the 3rd of May, the cloud had reached Great Britain on the one extent, while the other part was being dispersed all over Asian Russia and China, and was passing over Japan en route to the Aleutians. The 5th of May saw the cloud dispersed over most of the northern hemisphere. The activity was receding southeasterly from Western Europe, while arriving on the jet stream over the northwestern United States. Continued dispersion on the following days resulted in almost complete coverage of the northern hemisphere by some activity from the Chernobyl release cloud, with the stream of particles even advancing northwesterly toward Greenland. Topography and deposition by precipitation are not included in this model simulation. Following will be the contour lines for the 50-year unmitigated committed dose due to the effects of inhalation of the passing radioactive cloud in microgray one microgray being the equivalent of one-tenth of a millirad. This dose does not include contributions from other pathways and is mostly due to the radionuclides iodine-131 and cesium-137. The dose distribution shows a region exceeding 100 micrograys extending over the western USSR, northeastern Poland, and up into Sweden, while extending southward over the Ukraine and parts of Eastern Europe. Because of spatial averaging inherent in gridded models, radiation doses closer to the Chernobyl area are greatly underestimated. Most of Central Europe, parts of Northern Scandinavia, and the remainder of Eastern Europe received from 10 to 100 micrograys. The remainder of Europe received less than 10 micrograys. The dose within Japan is about one-tenth of a microgray, and that for the U.S. around one-thousandth of a microgray, which is negligible compared to background. 